In today's community focus, as the conflict in Ukraine enters its second month, the U.S. is considering more aid for the war-torn nation and weighing how to help Americans deal with high fuel prices. Joining us to talk about that and more, Massachusetts Congressman and former Marine Jake Auchincloss. Thank you so much for being here. It's good to be on. So I want to start with some news from just this afternoon. President Biden is now asking Congress to impose fees on oil and gas companies that are sitting on unused leased land in an effort to spur more domestic production of oil. As a green energy proponent, I mean, what do you think of this proposal? The United States needs to gain clean energy independence. We need to be in control over our own energy supplies and we need those supplies to be clean so that we can chart a course to a sustainable future for our kids and so that we're not dependent on the likes of Russia, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia and Iran for our critical supplies. That is the North Star we are sailing towards. We're not there yet. And as we are navigating short term volatility and prices, we do need to expand domestic production of oil supplies and fees on big oil who are complaining about not getting enough permits from the Biden administration, but not drilling in the permits that they have are a fully appropriate mechanism to do that. I want to talk about assistance for Ukraine. Congress has already passed $13.5 billion in emergency funding just earlier this month. The proposed DOD budget for fiscal year 2023 tops $770 billion. Do you think Congress has an appetite to spend even more here? When it comes to Ukraine, now is the time to hit and to hit hard. Because of the administration's actions with congressional support over the last month, we see that the sanctions are taking a, tro a toll on Vladimir Putin and the Russian economy. We see that we are boxing in Russia diplomatically, including uh, undermining their support from China. And we see that the lethal aid we are supplying to Ukraine is allowing their ground forces and air forces to repel the invasion. Because of that, Russian forces on the outskirts of Kiev over the next week to 10 days may well start to redeploy towards the east where they've got a more secure base. And any ground force is most vulnerable when it's in transition. Their logistics and command and control nodes are easier to attack. This is the time when we should step up our paramilitary intelligence and lethal aid to the Ukrainian special operations so that they can hit hard, change the facts on the ground, and give Zelensky as much negotiating leverage as he can possibly get at the dip diplomatic table in Turkey. You, you mentioned sanctions there briefly. You've introduced a new, a new bill called Yachts for Ukraine Act. It would seize Russian oligarchs, yachts, and other assets. So can you just explain to me and our viewers how this is different from the sanctions that are already being put into place? This bill sends a simple and clear message to Russian oligarchs that wherever they tried to hide their ill-gotten wealth, the United States can and will, with our allies, freeze and seize those assets and redirect them to the support of the Ukrainian people. It's part of a large uh, portfolio of measures that I first advocated more than a month ago as part of a 10-part plan that the administration uh, has really put to work to step up our support for the front lines of the free world in Ukraine while isolating and undermining the Kremlin as they wage this cruel invasion. As I mentioned, we're already entering the second month of this conflict in Ukraine from the briefings that you've attended, from what you're hearing. How much longer is this going to linger on? I can't forecast the outcome and the conduct of this war. What I can say is that probably more than at any other point in this five week invasion, we are seeing a pivot in Russian strategy. And that is a vulnerability. We need to step up our support to Ukrainians, whatever the weapon they need to defend their homeland, we need to be providing and we are providing. We should also step up target electronic warfare attacks in Ukraine against Russian forces. I've been a Marine officer forward deployed. I've been a cybersecurity manager. I have seen how effective it can be to jam radios, to impair computer systems that are really the currency of so much of the ability of ground forces to shoot, move, and communicate. Now is not the time uh, to let diplomacy do its work in Turkey. Now is the time to hit the Russians hard, change the facts on the ground, and give Zelensky negotiating leverage.
And I just want to pivot quickly before we let you go. You were critical of fellow Democrats for cutting billions in COVID funds from the budget. And now we're seeing reports that uh, vaccines and tests for people without insurance will no longer be free due to a lack of funds. Is it too late to fix this, Congressman? It's not too late to fix this. I'm working hard today to fix this. The old saying is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of pain. We've spent near $10 trillion on the pain of this pandemic, not to mention suffering and death. And yet there seems to be this recalcitrance to fund uh, relatively modest sums of money for research into universal coronavirus vaccine, for uh, procurement of life-saving medical supplies and therapies, and for vaccinating developing nations overseas to help them in their fight against COVID and to prevent future variants and surges from washing up on our shores. That is all the time we have for today. Massachusetts Congressman Jake Auchincloss, thanks so much for joining us. Good to be on. And looking ahead now to tomorrow when Mayor Jorge Alorza will join us for our monthly interview with him to talk all things Providence.